I'm doing another wet fly today from Ray Bergman's book, Trout. This is called the Marston's Fancy. It's a very, very simple little wet fly, kind of a caddis pattern. It's a, uh, just, uh, I'm using goose, but you can use duck if you want. It's a quill tail and wing on this in a dark gray. Peacock body and a brown hackle, that's all there is to it. It's a simple little fly, and I'll talk uh, during the video about ways to help this a little bit because it is a peacock curl body, as you'll see in the video. I actually, the first application of the body broke the hurls in the middle of it and had to start over again. Same thing can happen to you out on the water. So you might consider put it, putting a real thin gold rib on this, maybe even a silver rib on this just to reinforce that peacock curl or possibly put it in a dubbing loop and twist it up so the body's a little bit stronger. But this is tied very basic to Marston's Fancy. I'll get started tying. got the hook and the vise for the Marston's Fancy. This is a Mustad 3399 in a size 8. Standard wet fly hook. I'll debarb the hook. For thread, I'm just using a black thread. The It's a peacock curl body. I don't have any floss or anything to worry about darkening. So I'm just going to go with a Danville 6 aught in black. There's only four components to this fly. There's no tip to it, no, or a tag. There's a tail, body, wing, and a hackle. So it's a pretty basic, simple little wet fly. If I wax my thread, I'll start my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to advance this down to almost the end of the shank, maybe between the point and the barb, not quite the end of the shank. Gives me a few wraps for my tail. The tail on this is just a dark, dark gray. I'm using goose. You could use duck if that's what you have. The duck that I have isn't quite that good, so I'm just going to use a goose on this. I've already cut out two slips. And I want these to be about three to four barbs uh, in width. I'm going to tie these in about a shank length, maybe a little longer. Uh, throw the eye of the hook in on that. Like I said, there's no tip or tag or anything on this. It's just the tail and then the peacock curl body. So I'll secure that in and wrap a few more wraps down to get down to the end of the body. I'll trim this the length of the body. And for the body, it's just peacock hurl. You could use some strung hurl if you want. I've got a peacock feather here. I'm just going to strip these off of. I've steamed these so they're a little bit fuller. I'm going to use anywhere from five to six, maybe even, you could go four if you wanted a little bit thinner. I want this to be a little bit thicker, so I'm going to use about six. Peacock hurls, I've evened the tips up a little bit and then cut those so they're nice and smooth and even and i'm going to wrap that in the end of the body and then start wrapping my thread forward collecting the butt ends of that tail as well as the peacock curl down along the hook shank i can go a little bit further forward because all i have is a wing and a hackle up here and now i will wrap in the peacock curl for the body. I'm actually going to bring my thread a little bit more forward and I'm going to use the rotary features on my vise so that I get a much smoother uniform body on this. I have to unwrap the thread just a little bit here and there as I do that because as I'm wrapping, as I'm turning the vise, 
am actually adding red to the hook shank, as you can see. But this gives me a nice, even, uniform body. Take your time with it. If you don't have a rotary vise like this, by all means, just you can do it by wrapping in hand over hand. Sometimes that happens. It looks like I broke a couple of peacock curls. I'm just going to cut those out here. Hopefully they won't come any more unraveled. That one looks like it might be. Yep, I'm going to back that one out a little bit more until it's not coming unraveled. And the other one's coming unraveled. So here is an example of how things don't always go the way you want them. I could start the video all over again, but because this is such a quick and easy fly, I think I'm just going to unwrap all of those hurls. I'll take a moment to collect the other hurls and I'll show you how I get those together. And I'll tie those in and make the body again. This goes to show, no matter how much you prepare, things don't always go the way you want. So I've got these long hurls here with fine tips to them. What I'm going to do, they have a bit of a curve to them right here. I'm going to lay these down so that they all curve more or less in the same direction. Some of these tips are long, a little longer and finer than the others. I'll show you in just a second. I'm going to take that's four. I got some others on my desk here. Five and six. So I have these all with the curves kind of going in the same direction. I got a couple of them that are extra long and, and extra fine, and that's fine. I want to get most of these tips all even. What I'm going to do, turn these over, is I'm just going to cut those. So I'm taking those really delicate tips out of the equation. Although, I guess it doesn't matter since I just broke two of them as I was wrapping that in. Then I'm going to tie this in. I'm ready. I'm going to tie this in like I did before and advance my thread forward, collecting all of that along the hook shank, and we'll try this again. I find that often I have more issues with it breaking towards the end when I'm doing this hand over hand than I, I do when I am using the rotary features, but even then, You can be as careful as you, you can be when wrapping some of these in, and that's what happens. They'll break on you. Try not to pull too tight here. That could be why they broke before. I get that last wrap in. I'll go ahead and tie those in. The Marston's Fancy does not have a rib on it. As you can see, you break one a toothy critter or something breaks that, or an errant back cast hits something and it breaks, who knows what, just fatigues, then that can come unraveled. So feel free to put in a fine gold wire or something like that if you just want to reinforce that. I would think that it would still be considered a Marston's Fancy, even though the original does not have a rib. So moving on now, once we have our tail in and the body in, get that tail to split up a little bit. There we go. 
I like it better when it stays together when I tie it in, but then we can split up a little. Okay. Now the wing. The wing is the same dark gray quill. I'm going with the dark gray uh, goose on this, just like I did with the tail. It's a little bit longer, and this the feather where I'm I'm using this off of is in better shape. So I'm just going to stick with the goose. I got my right and left. I'm getting my tips even. As you can see, the slip on my side is a little wider. I'm going to flip that over, get the bottoms evened up there with my bodkin. I'm going to poke in and strip out about three fibers. Save that because that could be used for half of the tail. I've got my wing evened up. I've got the tips nice and even, and the width is right for both of them. So I'll tie that in. I want the tips to come about halfway down the tail. I'm going to do a pinch and loop, and here I'm going to assist it by pushing the front down just a little bit, and then pull on the thread to bring that all the way down to the hook shank. That will help when you do it that way. What it does is it helps this part come and be swept down more as opposed to having both of these just pulled down in the center and kind of sticking up at a greater angle. And that's just one little way to keep that to where you have a little bit more of a swept wing. Now it's interesting. I didn't notice this when I created these and, and cut these slips out, but if you look on this side, I have a barb here somewhere that got split up, but when they zip together, this one barb got in the wrong order. As a fishing fly, I'm not going to concern myself with that. And actually, even if I was going to frame this and present this or something, if that's going to be on the backside of the fly that's not really going to be seen, I would probably let that go. So in this case, I would mount this one so that this is the side that you're seeing. But just a little tip there. That's tied in well enough, so I'm going to trim away the excess. I'm going to bring my thread down to behind the eye of the hook to bind in those butt ends and neaten this up just a little bit for our hackle. For a hackle, I'm just using, it just calls for brown hackle. I've got a brown hen neck right here that I like. They have, um, <clears throat> they're nice long feathers. And the barbs aren't too long on them. So I can get three or four nice wraps of this feather in to give me the hackle that I'm looking for, the collar I'm looking for. I'm going to isolate the tip and stroke those fibers back. I'm going to bind that tip in with a couple of wraps, and then I'm going to fold it back. Another wrap. Now I'm working my way forward to up just behind the eye of the hook. The very tip of that now, I can just pop off. My hackle pliers. I'm only going to get you know, probably no more than four. I don't want it to be too bulky. There's one, two, I'm working my way up towards just behind the eye of the hook, three, and that fourth one will be right up behind the eye of the hook. Bring my thread around to secure that in, and then I can sweep all of those hackle fibers back, part of that hackle had a broken section in it. That's these short little fibers you see sticking out here. I'm going to wrap this in, working my way backwards to create the head and sweep those hackle fibers back. About halfway down, I get the head in about halfway. I'm just going to pop the rest of that hackle off. And I'll keep going back a little bit more 
and get a tapered head in just to clean all that up. That completes the fly and it gets all of these hackles swept back and pointed in a more of a rearward direction. Mostly as this drifts through the water, those legs are going to be swept back by the current and everything in a more of a rearward direction. But you never know if it happens to get into some slack water or something down in a hole, those hackles can pop back out as it's swimming and just gives a little bit more life. It looks more like legs underneath, which is kind of what you're going for. Put in my whip finish, trim away my thread. I get some head cement on both sides of the head here. And in a moment, I will then get some black lacquer on that, a couple of coats, and the Marston's Fancy is done. Like I said, just a very, very simple little wet fly. There's not much to it. Just the, uh, the dark gray tail and wing, peacock curl body, and the brown hackle. You don't have a nice brown hackle or a, say even a hen hackle, go with a rooster hackle. As long as you got it as a kind of a brown or ginger, uh, I think that's gonna work for you. And even if you don't have the darker gray, if you've got some natural mallard flank or something, I think that that would look just fine on the Marston's Fancy. So there's a quick little wet fly, Marston Fancy. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Thank you.